Good morning. My name is Haley Ferguson, and I'm here to share with you some of my spiritual path and how I ended up at Center of Unity. April 5th, 2019. I woke up at 3 a.m. in a panic. My heart was beating out of my chest. The room was spinning, and I felt sick. Then dread sunk in. Self-hatred and abusive self-talk instantly consumed my mind. I knew this feeling very well. I was hungover and had to find a way to put myself together to go into work. I had to act normal and appear to be productive. I knew this routine like the back of my hand, but this would be the last time. Today, I am proud to say that I am three years sober. Unbeknownst to me, April 5th, 2019, my sobriety date, would also be the beginning of my spiritual journey. Although we all know we've always been on the journey. There was something inside of me crying for help. It was begging and screaming, stop, please stop drinking Haley. I am dying. The voice was deafening. I had no idea what it was that was yearning inside of me for it to stop, but I had to make a choice. Today, I know what that it was. My sobriety started out on that last hungover mor morning in, 20, in April, uh, on April 2019 with a meek text message to my now husband, and I said, I think I want to take a break from drinking because a I was too cowardly to talk to him in person so it had to be through a text message and b the words I am quitting drinking was utterly terrifying for me to comprehend I waited in silence for what seemed like forever for his response he wrote back I support you a huge weight was lifted off of my shoulders and it was, a, it was a huge weight was lifted off of my shoulders, knowing that it was okay. I was supported, loved, and alcohol does not define me. Eight days after I stopped drinking, April 21st, 2019, and coincidentally Easter morning, I had a life altering experience. I was on the rooftop of our townhouse looking up at the sky as I cried tears of joy and happiness, <clears throat> knowing with my entire being that I was love. There was the most beautiful warmth in my chest and it was radiating out of every part of my body and everything in my being was vibrating. I recalled staring at my hands not knowing what even my hands were exactly. It was hard to speak due to the engulfing feeling of love that was in and outside of me. I was eternal. There was no beginning nor no end. I was vast. I was one with God, the divine. I laughed and through tears of joy, I proclaimed repeatedly, I am free, I am free. I am free. It was the most profound moment in my life. And I knew everything would be different from that moment on. I knew truth, and once you know truth, you can't unknow it. It isn't a knowing you find in a book, in a person, a belief, a thing. It isn't learned, and it isn't in the mind. It, God, is in our innate being. It is our birthright. It is wordless, formless. I also knew in that moment that everyone has this in them, and it was beautiful. I knew that our purpose as human beings was just to awaken, to remember. Remember our true nature. We are innately good. Nothing is wrong with us. We are all connected, and we always have been and always will be. 
We are free. We are love. We are one with God. After this event, I was catapulted on my journey, and my awakening would be needed more than I could ever imagine within the first year of my sobriety. The first year of being sober was the most jarring year of my life to date. I experienced extreme lows and extreme highs. Within my first year of sobriety, I experienced earth-shattering events. My father was diagnosed with Parkinson's disease. COVID struck our entire globe. And lastly, we had a horrific family lost where my brother was murdered. On the other side of the coin, within the first year, I was wed to my now husband, and we had a beautiful destination wedding. We also had the joy of buying our first home together. And lastly, we both kept our jobs through a global pandemic, and I humbly thrived in my career. Again, the first year of sobriety came with horrendous happenings, but at the same time, beautiful life events were still unfolding. I still and probably am for a very long time going to be processing everything that happened within that first year. Now, <clears throat> my sobriety didn't mean that Brandon stopped drinking or my parents or my friends or most of the population in general, nor did I expect any of them to do so. This was for me, but I needed support and community and guidance. I was a fish out of water, and, this, and I was also very vulnerable. So what to do? Google. I found support groups um, on Facebook, and they led me to my first book, which is now of many books, and that book was This Naked Mind by Annie Grace. Her book was a gateway, or a sign pointer, as some spiritual teachers call them. Her book then led me to A Course in Miracles. I instantly thought the name alone, A Course in Miracles, sounded very woo-woo. But luckily, I was not raised in a religious household, and I'm very grateful for that. And therefore, my entire life, I was always open and curious and just had a sense of, I don't know, when it came to the topic of religion and spirituality. So I was open to exploring A Course in Miracles, and turns out, I read it, and I resonated with it, and I thought, oh wow, I am not crazy. There are other people out there that have experienced what I have, and they know about truth. After doing self-study on my own for a while, I yearned for, I yearned for a community, and I wanted to find, um, sorry, and I wanted to find an in-person meeting in course. So that led me to my, to my first meeting um, for a Course in Miracles that was held at Center of Uni or at Unity off Greenville Avenue in Dallas. This group is amazing. As we all know, when we gather, it is profound and powerful. I attended in-person meetings for Course for a while and then got curious about the church we were in, Unity. What was Unity all about? Back to Google. After researching about unity, I had another, oh wow, I'm not crazy. There are other people that gather to talk about truth. I decided to attend service and love the message. While I didn't attend regularly to Unity off Greenville, and Avenue, Greenville Avenue, I knew that unity churches as a whole were a place I could connect. Brandon and I moved to Las Colinas in 2020, and I felt a tug to seek out a spiritual community. I found three local unities near our home, but something pulled me strongly to visit Center, Center of Unity first and foremost. I listened. August 2021, I attended my first service at Center of Unity, and I instantly felt at home. On my first visit, I sat next to Ganera, and boy, did I choose a good person to sit next to. She warmly greeted me to Center of Unity and shared her history with COU. She, she made me feel welcome and therefore I wanted to come back. 
On my second visit, I had the pleasure of meeting the joyful Barbara Luters. This woman can instantly make me feel better just by her smile and her presence. <laughs> she told me about COU's fun social group called Quirked, and I knew I wanted to attend those events when I was able to. I continued to return Sunday to Sunday service feeling deeply connected to the message that Reverend Linda shared with us each week. Her gentle way of communicating, her authenticity, her curiosity, the whole Linda package. I knew she was a wonderful teacher to have in my life and that the COU community was something I wanted to be a part of. Since then, I have deepened my spiritual practice through COU's offerings and became an official member in February of this year. Some of the ways that me and my husband have served our community have been through donating to the Rebuild the Sanctuary, being enrolled in the Committed to Giving program, donating toys and volunteering our time to the I Can Still Shine nonprofit that we're affiliated with, donating food to Grace, helping supply Easter eggs for the kids this year and participating in those events. And ways I have grown spiritually at COU have been through adult Sunday school, the COU's Membership 101 class that was led by Gigi Johnson, and lastly and most profoundly, through the Disciples program that Reverend Linda is leading members through this year. In this intimate group, we were exploring individually and collectively our spiritual path and purpose in this time and dimension. In this program, I'm diving into self-inquiry with my thoughts and emotions, releasing past traumas, and connecting with fellow community members. We are also educating one another about, the, about Unity's 12 powers and how to practice them in our everyday lives. So that is my Haley's story and how I came to this beautiful place that we call our church home. We are so blessed to be together and share our oneness with God. I look forward to growing with all of you and supporting COU's future, and I hope you all have a blessed day. Namaste.